just checking that. I Okay, there's someone with the microphone open. I'm getting a bit of uh, echo. Sorry, if you could uh, go on uh, on mute. Okay, let's get started then. Uh, welcome uh, everyone to this uh, uh, July session of the Uyuni Community Awards. Uh, this uh, session is uh, a um, special one, so before uh, uh, starting, uh, uh, let me uh, say uh, to every one of you, happy Sysadmin Day. Uh, and I think that uh, having a community hour during uh, the Sysadmin Day, it's also a, a nice way to uh, celebrate uh, all the Sysadmin uh, that uh, behind the scenes are uh, keeping uh, all our system uh, up and running, uh, and who knows, maybe uh, they are also using uh, Uyuni. So uh, let's say thanks to uh, every one of them, and uh, let's hope that uh, with uh, Uyuni we can uh, uh, keep uh, their life uh, a bit uh, uh, easier, at least. So what we are uh, going to see today? Uh, well, for today, we have uh, three different uh, um, uh, topics. Uh, the first one will be the um, presentation of the second project uh, that uh, uh, we have this year for the uh, Google Summer of Code. And uh, Hossem will uh, present uh, uh, his work uh, uh, around uh, the oval uh, data for uh, enhancing the CV audit. Uh, then, uh, uh, given that uh, we want to um, uh, boost uh, the contributors uh, uh, that uh, are interested uh, to uh, get in touch with uh, with our project uh, and uh, to improve uh, directly Uyoni. Uh, we have uh, uh, two more sessions uh, that uh, uh, will uh, uh, give you uh, the needed guidance for uh, contributing uh, to the Uyoni documentation and uh, uh, to the front-end uh, development. So let's get started uh, with uh, Hossein. Uh, I will uh, stop the screen sharing so you can uh, directly go. Uh, thank you. Uh, so let me uh, share my presentation. And, uh, uh, okay, now you should see my uh, slide. Now, yes. Got it. Audio okay. is good. Feel free to go. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So uh, the, today I will uh, talk about the MagiSoc project. Uh, I've been working on this project uh, for uh, two months now, uh, still two months to go. So it's uh, in the uh, in kind of uh, the middle uh, of uh, the timeline. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, before uh, before that, let me introduce myself. So my name is uh, Hossein Nasri. I'm a GSOC, EGSOC mentee uh, and open source uh, Uyuni. Uh, I'm from Tunisia. And that was uh, about me. Uh, this is the agenda for today. And uh, uh, we'll start with uh, an introduction. Uh, what is uh, about the CV auditing and the uh, OVAL? Uh, so CV auditing, I'm sure uh, most of you already are familiar, uh, familiar with the concept. So uh, CV auditing is uh, a feature inside Uyuni that allows you to scan uh, your systems for uh, security vulnerabilities using a CV identifier. So this is one of the core features uh, in Uyuni, and uh, one uh, one of the most uh, one of the oldest uh, features. So uh, about the uh, Oval. So uh, Oval stands for uh, uh, Open Vulnerability and Assessment Language. Uh, it is a language uh, that is designed to provide uh, uh, standard, uh, standardized format uh, for exchanging uh, security data. Uh, it's used uh, to exchange information about uh, security vulnerabilities, software flows, uh, and uh, patches too. So the uh, OVAL format uh, consists of three main categories. We have the OVAL system characteristics uh, schema, which is uh, used for collecting configuration data from system uh, systems for testing and the oval uh, results schema for reporting the results from the evaluated systems 
and uh, finally the overall definition schema for testing the presence of specific machine state uh, uh, for a system like it could be a vulnerable state, compliance state, a patched state, uh, any kind of uh, state uh, that uh, might interest us from a security point of view. So let me, uh, that was the introduction. So let me pass to the next slide. Uh, so in this uh, slide, I will uh, list down the problems uh, of uh, the CVE auditing uh, feature in OYUNI. Uh, so these problems uh, still exist in the latest version of OYUNI, and uh, MyGSOC project aims to solve not all of them, but uh, uh, I managed uh, until now to solve two of them. Uh, but uh, still, I still have time. Uh, so the third problem uh, right now, I don't have a solution for, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So the first problem is uh, that uh, uh, the current implementation of uh, this uh, CPE auditing feature in OUNI, uh, it, uh, it's possible to get uh, false negatives. So it's possible to scan your system and get a result that is uh, not correct. Uh, one example of a false negative is uh, that if you scan your system uh, against a no patch vulnerability, so a vulnerability that doesn't have a patch is uh, a zero day vulnerability. So you'll get that you are not affected. Uh, although you are, uh, you could be affected, but uh, you don't know. You'll always get uh, not affected if you scan your systems uh, against a, a vulnerability without a patch. Mm, so uh, the project uh, uh, solves this. Uh, so we have the next uh, problem. Is that uh, you need to wait for channels to sync before prefer, uh, before uh, before auditing uh, your systems. So like uh, as you know, channels uh, can take a lot of time to sync. Well, that will depend on your internet uh, connection. Uh, but uh, if you have a slow connection, that uh, then uh, that might take days weeks and in that time you can't uh, audit your systems so i uh, that's uh, one another problem uh, the last problem which uh, i've been told that it was asked many times by other users that you can't audit against multiple cbes uh, at once you need to enter each cbe uh, like uh, one time so it's a kind of uh, a lot of manual work to, uh, to do. Uh, these were the problems. Uh, so uh, now I will uh, talk about some of the project highlights. These are uh, things, uh, these are uh, uh, additions and uh, improvements that uh, the project uh, brings to UNI. So the first uh, addition is uh, we bring support for uh, DBNCV auditing. Uh, as you may know, uh, currently, you know, you, you can't uh, uh, audit uh, DPN systems uh, CV, with CVE, of, of course. But uh, after uh, this project is integrated, this will be made uh, possible. So another uh, highlight is that we eliminate uh, false negatives. So this problem, I, uh, uh, the problem I talked about uh, in the previous slide uh, is now uh, solved. So the next uh, highlight is uh, we provide a more accurate patch status. So uh, we introduced two uh, extra uh, patch status that will provide more context about the state of the systems. So uh, for example, if you get uh, the affected partial patch applicable status, then that means that uh, uh, your system is vulnerable. Uh, there is a patch, but even applying that patch won't solve uh, the whole, uh, the whole uh, vulnerability. It will only patch uh, some of the vulnerable packages, subset of the vulnerable packages. So uh, I don't know if uh, this uh, could be made useful, but uh, it provides more context and that will help you to make the right decision if you want to apply that partial patch or just uh, uh, do it another way. Uh, so we have the uh, another patch status, which is affected patch inavailable. So this one might seem similar to the patch inapplicable, uh, which already exists in OUNI, but they are completely different. Uh, so the affected patch inapplicable patch status uh, means that uh, there is a patch that your system is affected first, uh, and there is a patch, but uh, the patch exists in other channels. 
So if you think your channel or uh, assign more channels, uh, you'll uh, you can you have access to the uh, you'll be able to apply the patch. Okay, but this one the affected patch unavailable uh, means that uh, there is no patch for the vulnerability, uh, not in assigned channels, not in other channels. Uh, it's basically a zero day vulnerability. So it's a very dangerous kind of vulnerability, as you may know. Uh, so uh, just uh, zero day vulnerabilities are uh, uh, vulnerabilities that uh, that's been zero day since uh, they they've been uh, discovered. Okay, uh, so they don't have a patch. That's uh, like the uh, the definition of it. Uh, so uh, in uh, of uh, the latest version of Uni. If you were to scan your systems against a zero-day vulnerability, you'll get not affected, uh, but you could be affected. You just, uh, you always get not affected, uh, never uh, uh, whether you are actually affected or not. But uh, with this uh, uh, project, we solve this problem. And if you scan your systems against uh, zero-day vulnerability, you will get uh, that uh, patch is available if uh, you are affected, of course. Uh, so another thing uh, we uh, uh, another addition is that uh, you don't need to wait for channels to sync in order to audit your systems. Uh, although there is a caveat uh, here that I need uh, to explain. So the caveat is the uh, you can uh, audit the state, the security state of your system, whether it is vulnerable or patched or not affected, but you can't apply the patch. Uh, to apply the patch, you need to sync channels. Uh, so it's uh, the uh, the applying of patches with, without syncing the channels uh, is another problem uh, that, uh, that we can solve uh, another time. Uh, so these were the project highlights. So uh, now I will talk uh, about open problems. These are problems that uh, I encountered uh, while working on the project. Uh, some of them are introduced by the project. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, these problems are uh, support more distributions uh, as soon as they corresponding to that data becomes available. So this uh, detail I didn't mention before. So uh, the aim of the project is to support uh, SUSE, Debian, Red Hat, and Ubuntu systems, only these uh, four uh, distributions or product lines. Uh, when uh, What I mean by support is to apply the improvements. The project highlights I, uh, expl I uh, mentioned in the previous slide to these uh, four uh, product lines. Uh, the other products are not uh, affected by this, uh, these improvements because uh, uh, of a uh, limitation in uh, the overall data they provide uh, to uh, to accurately evaluate uh, uh, a certain system state, we need the uh, access to uh, vulnerability overall definitions. So this uh, specific type of overall uh, data, if we don't have that, then we can't actually uh, perform accurate evaluations, and uh, we'll get the same uh, problems that we had with uh, the channels based. Uh, approach that we that UNI currently employs. So as soon as these uh, distributions or the product lines start producing cobalt data that we uh, need, then uh, we can easily integrate them uh, into UNI and uh, share the improvements uh, with uh, those. Okay, another problem, a problem is uh, the appliance of uh, patches without syncing channels. So this one, I'm not sure if it's feasible, uh, so, but uh, it is uh, it uh, it is a problem that exists. It would be great if uh, you could like uh, audit your systems and apply patches without syncing channels. Uh, but uh, it it exists uh, right now. I have uh, no solution for it. But I will. Uh, I still have time. I'll think uh, also. I'll think about it. So the last problem is uh, auditing multiple CVEs. Uh, so this uh, this is an open problem, problem too. Uh, I I don't have a solution for, it. and uh, I thought I will uh, I will mention it. So uh, that was all for today. If you have any questions,
So it seems uh, that for now we don't have uh, any any other questions. So let's uh, uh, move to the next uh, presentation. Uh, Joseph was already starting to <laughs> present. So um, here you are, uh, a guide to contribute uh, to the Uyoni documentation. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, nice to be here today. Uh, yes, so uh, bear with me here. So who am I? Uh, my name is Joseph Kaywit. I'm the coordinator for SUMA Uni Documentation Squad. I've been working for the SUMA team since March of 2015, and my tasks are information engineering, innovation, docs, translation, and of course our toolchain. And I hope to give you a good overview of the docs toolchain and uh, what's expected uh, to help contribute. So just as a brief overview uh, of documentation tools that we're using, uh, we're working with Entoro, which is a static site generator. Uh, we've got a backend that's based on ASCII Doctor, and this allows us to produce uh, ASCII Doctor PDFs um, based on the ASCII Doctor ADOC syntax, along with the ASCII Doctor PDF library. And uh, Julio created us a wonderful container, the UniDocs helper, which simplifies uh, your job. So if you feel like contributing, it's highly recommended to uh, grab a copy of this container and uh, play around with it. You will not have to build the toolchain locally or anything. It's all set up for you. So how is our repository organized? Um, if you head over to the uni project, the uni docs, um, you'll see a modules directory. This is where all of our books are stored. And inside of the modules directory, we've got each book inside of um, its own uh, directory. Inside each book directory, we've got our images and assets, pages, and uh, nav uh, guide, basically, which is the ASCII doctor list of setting up the left navigation in the static HTML sources. And this uh, navigation uh, list is also used for constructing the ASCII doctor PDF um, table of contents. And then the book pages, um, any pages that you're going to be working on or adding to uh, will go into the appropriate book. If you have questions about, you know, where documents should go, of course, just reach out to us. This is what uh, the lists actually look like. They're just simple ASCII doctor lists, and we are using if evals to control product content. So, for example, at the top here, you can see if eval sumo content is equal to true, then show this content. And we've also got blocks for a uni. I'm not going to go too deep, oddly enough, into a uh, first contribution because we already have a document on this and it's uh, very extensive on how to fork the project, how to make your first clone, make your changes on your fork, and then uh, push that content as a PR to upstream. So please check out this link if you'd like to contribute. Uh, one thing we do recommend is again using the uni docs helper um, you can clone this repository and then build the container by following the instructions at the uni docs helper repository and as, as you can see from this uh, little snippet you just run the uni docs helper and i'm here i'm listing uh, the local repository which is one directory back in a uni docs and I'm specifying a branch of the repository, which is master, and then a command, which is entora a uni en for English, and the product is a uni. Doing this will produce um, a very fast result for testing your docs um, in English only, so you don't have to wait for all of the translation outputs. Once you have your review, uh, excuse me, once you have your PR created, and you have pushed it upstream, you're going to want to um, add reviewers. Um, no PR can be accepted without at least two reviewers. And um, you're going to click the review button on the right side and then add uh, at least one writer. And if you are aware of a subject matter expert uh, for the content, one of the developers or a sales engineer, uh, feel free to add them also as a reviewer. And if you're not sure, just uh, inquire in our Gitter under uh, user search avail or feel free to ping me via email. So 
some helpful resources are here. And if you'd like, I can paste these all in the chat after after the call. But we have our first contribution docs. Um, I get the README for the UniDocs helper. We've got a writing usage guide. This is on basic guidelines, and we don't want to um, uh, discourage <laughs> contributions. So feel free to submit pretty much anything. We'll go ahead and correct it for you. But um, if you are interested in um, accuracy and uh, kind of the styles that we're looking for, then feel free to review that guide. Also, there's an ASCII doc getting started, which probably needs an update. <laughs> So for your information, our, our technical writers are myself uh, at JK Wood, uh, Carl Eichwalder, and Ornella Marek. You can contact, add any of these as reviewers to your um, PRs. You can reach us on Gitter, Devel, and users, uh, or you can email me at uh, jkwood at suza.com. Thank you very much for your time. Are there any questions? So what areas do you need contributions for the most? Ooh, that is the right question. <laughs> um, one of the areas that we really need uh, help with would be the specialized guides. So these are on uh, things that are very useful for the community, um, things that sales engineers or uh, open source users would be interested in from an architectural perspective. So topics, for example, large deployments, public cloud, SAP, using salt, uh, ways of configuring, configuration management. OK. Great. Anything you feel is valuable. <laughs> yeah. Happy to read. With, with examples, right? <laughs> yeah, examples would be great, but we're also happy to do some testing. Uh, I don't know if there are questions on the chat because I'm doing the recording, uh, so I'm not switching uh, on uh, on the different apps. Uh. It would be great if uh, uh, someone could also have a look there. There are no questions. There maybe. are no questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I saw the the dot on the interface and I wasn't sure. Thanks. Thank you. Well, maybe something uh, about the documentation and uh, providing uh, uh, some uh, uh, enhancements uh, and uh, uh, new guides. Uh, I think that a pain point uh, uh, are also the screenshot uh, of the documentation. So maybe it could make sense uh, to try to provide the documentation with screenshot that uh, uh, it's not changing too much uh, over the different versions uh, because it's really painful to keep those uh, screenshots uh, uh, updated. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. Um, we have been trying to reduce screenshots because of localization. With translations, we have to keep up, and if the UI changes, we have to keep up, and et cetera. So, yeah, try to keep screenshots to a minimum if possible. <laughs> Okay, then uh, if, uh, uh, if there are no more questions, uh, first of all, thanks uh, for the uh, introduction, uh, Joseph. And uh, I think we can uh, uh, move to the next uh, presentation from uh, Carl on uh, um, contributing uh, to the development of the, of the front end. Okay, hello. Do you see my screen? Yes, screen is there and audio is good. Thanks. Okay. I'm on a pretty large screen, so if anything is too small, just uh, let me know. Because right now I'm zooming to the wrong window and now I'm zooming to the right one. 
So hello, I didn't bring any slides because this is more of a technical presentation. Today I'll be talking about essentially how to contribute to the to Uni if you find a UI bug or something that you think should be improved in its UI and you feel like you want to get your own hands dirty and uh, improve it. Uh, so as a preambula, I have uh, one local server running of Uni at server.tf.local and we're going to do development against that server. So for Uyuni, almost all of the modern UI lives in a directory called web. There's also all the pages that live in the Java directory, but we'll skip over those today. And in the web directory, in the readme, there is a quick start guide, essentially how to get started developing for the UI. It consists of four steps, install node, yarn, and then install de dependencies, and then run a development proxy. So in short order, we'll do all of those. So node I already have installed. Yarn I already have installed. And for your convenience, I already installed the dependencies, so we don't have to wait for that to run. Can you increase a bit uh, the font of the terminal? At least for me, it's uh, small to read. Yep, yeah, much better. Busy. OK, yeah, Thanks. sorry. So and uh, now I'm going to run a proxy. Against. The same server I ha already have running. Uh, so it is in essential. This will open a new browser window. You'll note that we're running uh, a development server on our local host. And what this does what the development proxy does, it takes the server you target, server.tf.local, as the baseline. This server will provide everything that you don't modify. And in your code, whatever you modify will be overwritten. Essentially, we, we will provide the baseline from the server and then apply whatever we change in the code on top of that, which, which allows us to essentially do development without constantly redeploying the server, restarting Tomcat and so on, which will save us a considerable amount of time. Now, for what we want to do for development, I'll also increase uh, this one. In the Uyuni repository, we have a bunch of issues that are tagged as a good first issue. These are either bugs or improvements that the development team over time has uh, found and hasn't had time to fix or have uh, found and found left, left them there as good first issues for someone else to contribute. And today I've gone and found uh, one of those good first issues, which is about the missing translation wrappers, which in short means that there is a page in Uyuni that currently cannot be correctly translated by our translators. And the page we're talking about is the SALT formula catalog. Going to go to that page. And essentially, the issue is that this text alert here, which is very hard to highlight because the highlight is nearly the same color as the alert itself, uh, is not translatable. And I've also gone and opened the same file up in the code editor. This is the salt formula catalog. And essentially, the problem here is that all of the text that we see in the alert, this is just inline text, and the translation tooling has no idea that this text should be translated. So for demo purposes, I'm just going to duplicate this alert. So now in our development server tab, everything automatically reloads and you instantly see your changes. And why I want to demonstrate this is because in this other tab, where I'm still on server.tf.local, I'm going to go to the same page. And we can see that on the server, nothing has really happened. Uh, there's still only one message. Everything that we're doing in development is not deployed to the server. It's just done in memory on your local development, which means that your server is safe and sound. You don't have to worry about breaking things. You're essentially serving your changes locally. So you can test things out, develop 
and iterate quickly without worrying about, oh, if I now deploy this change, then later on I will have to figure out how to reverse it if something is bro broken. That's not really an issue here. We can just do all of our development locally on your own machine in, in memory, serve it and use the server as a baseline. So in you need a tra uh, general translation translation logic all runs through this uh, function called T, uh, which used to be get text this days it's powered by Intel. And essentially what we want to do is to put all of this text into this translation wrapper. So we're going to do exactly that. And what we also want to do is we want to make our lives easier, the lives of our translation translators easier. So instead of intermixing a lot of code and translations, we basically want to give the translate translators just the text to translate and figure out what to do about all this link logic ourselves. So we're going to insert the placeholder for the link. And then the rest of the text. Okay, yeah, cool. So now when the translator sees this string in the tooling, all they have to do is translate everything in this line. And they don't have to worry about the link bit, which we'll deal with in a moment. So this link bit currently is only used as a placeholder. Now we're going to implement that as well. And we're going to take the same bit we cut out from the previous translation. And now what the, what the translation tooling will automatically do is it will read this whole string, find this placeholder and replace this placeholder that the translator doesn't have to worry about with this link. Whatever is inside of the placeholder will be inserted into this link and then the translation uh, tooling will do the rest. Now we will remove the older one since we don't need that anymore. And essentially, visually, nothing has changed, but now this uh, page can be correctly translated by our translators. So from here on out, the next logical step is to make a branch, commit your changes and make a pull request. And essentially, here you will find the template for filing a pull request. You'll uh, comment whether any there were any UI changes, whether the tests changed, and so on. And you can already see that GitHub will automatically apply someone from from the team to review this change because this uh, file is under the GitHub uh, code owners logic. So essentially, when you make the pull request, someone from the team will see your pull request, come along, have a look at it and comment on it and either help you polish it until it's ready to merge or if it's ready to merge right away, we'll approve and merge it. That's essentially it from zero to how to contribute. Do you have any questions? have uh, a question uh, from uh, um, your point of view if uh, uh, there there are areas where um, let's see new contributors could uh, look directly or in general if uh, uh, there are some new good first issues that uh, you could uh, suggest uh, to look into 
Uh, if you go into GitHub issues and look for the label uh, good first issue, then there's already a number of those here. Uh, which one to suggest exactly largely depends on uh, what your own familiarity with a certain topic is or certain interest is. For example, if you know if you're already familiar with content life cycle management, then this issue might be a good one, and so on. But I think also in general, if you don't know of an of a specific topic and you're not entirely sure, then you can just ask on Gita and we'll be happy to respond. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. There is a question in the chat, actually. Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I don't see the chat right now. Does it matter which node or end yarn version is used? Uh, we currently use uh, yarn one, and the uh, node version. Uh, personally, I run on the oldest node we support, which is fourteen, to ensure there's no uh, breakages on the oldest version. But in general, any long-term support node version is fine. Does that answer the question? I'm going to stop sharing because then I can also see the chat. Yeah, he seems to be fine. Okay, cool. Any other questions? I guess not. So, Marina, back to you. Thanks a lot, Carl. And uh, again, thanks uh, for the uh, introduction and the overview on uh, how to submit uh, the, the very first uh, batch. Uh, so, for um, for today, we don't have uh, um, um, other presentations. So, I think we can uh, directly uh, open uh, to the general questions uh, from. Uh, um, the other uh, attendees, or um, if you don't have a question, but you want to share uh, any other idea or anything uh, uh, that you would like to discuss, of course, feel free to uh, directly speak out. I have a question about the... the... Okay, feel free to... Well, I have a question about the release of Uyuni. Um, I understand that 2023.06 was due last month, but it hasn't actually shipped last month or even this month at the moment, although there are a few days left. Do we know what the plan is for the next release of Uyuni? Uh, yeah, the plan uh, um, is to have it uh, for um, for August. Uh, I hope we can uh, we can deliver it. I, I had some uh, issues while uh, preparing uh, the, the new release uh, and uh, Things are improving, are looking better, but the release is uh, still not ready. So, sorry for uh, for the delay. Okay, that's fine. So, will that release be? Do we know what the release number will be if it's in August? Will that be 08 or would it be? Yeah, it likely it to be, be six or seven? 08. It'll be an 08. Uh, the, okay. the plan is to follow the the month, so the, the next okay. one should be the 08. And okay. uh, it's getting uh, delayed because the new version will also bump the uh, base operating system that uh, we are using. So we will uh, switch to, to leap uh, 15.5. And uh, this switch is not happening exactly smoother as I hope. OK, but, thank uh, you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, there is another question, uh, Brown. So I was wondering if it was safe to apply OS patches on 15.4 um, with uh, the current Yeni. We, we seem to have run into an issue where salt jumped from 3004 to 3006 that broke some things for us. So I was wondering if what the general sense is for applying patches on 15.4 um, before the 08 release drops? Uh, so for sure, um, it makes sense to to apply the um, the last released uh, patch for uh, for Uni because that one is uh, also adding uh, some uh, um, some more um, security fixes. 
and uh, for that, of course, um, it's it's a patch to be installed on top of the uh, last release, the stable version, so the 0.4. Uh, for the for the other issues, uh, um, I think it could make sense to um, to have a look. I don't know if you if you have already a, a bug report, uh, so maybe we can uh, uh, we can check for that and uh, then uh, suggest uh, which is the best uh, strategy to follow. Um, we've had a variety of issues um, of late. Um, so I've got one bug report in and then I've got a question in the chat and uh, the salt things, um, everything kind of ground to a halt when salt updated um, because none of the none of the systems would update. Uh, so we had to revert back to the previous salt and now we're kind of in a semi broken state. Um, trying to troubleshoot and go through all that right now. So I'll try and get some more issues updated or added. I'm sorry for that. I know that um, it's not exactly optimal as a, as a state. No, thank you. Yeah, but I, yeah. I do expect that with new release of Juni, uh, sorry, Don, um, it was issues will be resolved. So I guess what happened really is that, yeah, since now you have a new minion at, at 15 SP4, um, and Juni still is based on 3004, uh, you have this uh, problem, and uh, we need to have like uh, a same version for master and the minion in, in this particular case, and that's where this whole uh, problem um, is emerging from uh, but yeah uh, let's hope that yeah will be uh, the new release of juni uh, i i really hope that yeah all of these uh, issues will be gone don i interpret you sorry no that's fine i was just gonna say um i updated my uni 2023-04 server to Salt 3006 and then updated all the clients and I'm not experiencing any challenges yet. So, um, but then again, you know, I have 23 registered systems, so it's not a giant environment, but, but nonetheless, uh, that's been my experience that it's working okay, but I always do it in the order where I, try to update the server first and then the clients because otherwise it you know potential of having a newer version on the client than on the server we've seen that cause issues in the past any more questions or comments If it's not the case, uh, I can uh, give you back uh, 50 minutes and uh, we can uh, uh, meet for, uh, for the next uh, uh, reunion community hours. So, so there's a question in the chat. Abid, do you know if that's the case if we've released the VENV packages for the 3006 packages for those alternate distributions for uni? I think we have. Um, let me try to look at the chat. I think should be updated, but, uh, yeah, let, let's. Uh, I think it's better to to do the the debug directly in the in the bug. Yeah, yeah. Also, because in that way we can also have uh, the engineers have a look, uh, and not in the team's chat. <laughs> Hi, uh, 
Um, any more uh, comments or questions? Seems not. Uh, then. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks everyone uh, for uh, for joining. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. And.